Hello and welcome back to Flute Tube. Thanksgiving Day is coming right up and of course I'm thankful for many things, but one thing I'm especially thankful for is that I get to be a professional musician. And today and for the next couple of weeks, I want to talk about possible career paths for musicians. I know that right now is a little bit of a difficult time for music majors because they've been looking at the world and looking at what happened with musicians and COVID and a lot of them are feeling anxious about their own possible job outcomes after their degrees are over. Also, frankly, it has been really hard for professional musicians. We just are used to getting together in large groups of people and performing and communicating through music. And for instance, there are a number of superstar, world-class orchestral players who simply were told, go home, we're putting you on furlough. Music majors have seen this and thought, when are things going to open back up? What is the world going to be like when I have my degree? And I know it's caused anxiety, understandably. I am also aware of the phenomenon that even in normal times, music majors may be asked, what are you studying in school? And when they say something like flute performance or bassoon performance, the response may be, oh yeah, just exactly what are you going to do with that? There's actually plenty of good employment for musicians if you know where to look for it. That's what I'm going to talk about for a little while here. So like this video if you think that the world would be a better place if there were more employed professional musicians. The first point I want to make as we're getting into discussing careers is that if you become a music major, there are multiple tracks that you can take through college to prepare you for your ultimate musical career. The path that you choose through school should help you to become best prepared for the specific kind of music employment that you're interested in. When you go to college and study music, if you want to become really specialized in your instrument, you would go and get a Bachelor of Music, BM rather than Bachelor of Arts, BA, in music performance. This basically means that your class schedule will be quite heavily oriented to music classes. Music performance, taking large ensembles, taking small ensembles, taking music theory and music history. If you think you want to end up teaching music in a junior high or middle school or high school, you'll do a Bachelor of Music degree as well, but in music education. You could, of course, also major in something like music history or music theory or composition. You can also, instead of doing a Bachelor of Music degree, do a Bachelor of Arts degree in music. That is more broad-based, so you'll end up taking a lot more courses that are not specifically in music. Often universities will have more of a requirement to take foreign language, or a lot more broad humanities classes. There are other kinds of paths you can explore that may be a little more rare, that may be offered at some schools but not other schools, like getting a degree in media music or music therapy or arts management or administration. Whatever you do your degree in, it doesn't rope you into a subsequent career. You could do a Bachelor of Arts in music, but practice really hard and go just the same place that a Bachelor of Music in performance would go as long as your playing is at that level. But of course you want to do your best matching your degree path to your ultimate career in music so that you're using your schooling time to best prepare you for the future. The better you match those goals of studying and finding your way into a career subsequently, the more success you're likely to have once you get out there into the world after you finish your degree in college. Let's get into a list of possible musical careers. Today I'm going to focus on the careers that people think of the most often, that may be the most obvious, but I'm going to talk about my own and friends and colleagues' reactions to these jobs because they're not always exactly what you would think. So take or leave what I have to say, take it all with a grain of salt, but sometimes people think that it's living the dream to go and do one certain thing and then once they get there, they realize there are some limitations and some things that they did not anticipate. Next episode, I'll talk about a bunch of possible musical careers that might be much less obvious to you, that might not instantly spring to your mind, but that are out there and in the field of music and that I know many people who deeply enjoy being involved with music in these other ways. So for today, 
I'd say that the two careers that come to people's mind first when they think about majoring in music and going and having a musical career are to either be a music professor or to join a professional orchestra. I'll start by talking about what it's like to be a music professor since that's the track that I chose, that's what I do. The pros are that there is a lot of flexibility. When you become a full-time professor, you're expected to research and publish. And for musicians, the equivalent is that we are expected to perform. We're expected to go out there and be active in our field, play solos, chamber music, orchestral music, whatever we want to do. And that's what's really appealing to me because when I was going through school, I knew that what I really loved was playing as a soloist and playing chamber music. And I enjoyed playing with orchestras, but it was never my heartfelt dream to be a full-time orchestral player. If you're a music professor, Music is the research equivalent that you do. Rather than publishing books, rather than publishing articles, although you can publish articles, I've published in Flute Talk, you go out and you do performances. I'm part of a woodwind quintet, I have a flute viola harp trio, I perform as a soloist quite often, and I also do play with orchestras. More often than you would probably think would happen. When I meet new people who are not in the field of music and I tell them that I'm a music professor, they say something to me along the lines of, oh, are you ever sad that being a musician, you gave up performing in order to teach? And so I try to educate them that I would be in trouble if I stopped performing, that in order to teach flute majors, the expectation is that I'm out there in the field, I'm giving performances, I'm recording CDs, so that my students will trust me as being an authority playing the flute who can guide them into careers of their own. In fact, some orchestral musicians who have played in an orchestra for some number of years eventually go and look for a job being a music professor because they envy the flexibility that's part of a professor's schedule. And frankly, I have always loved teaching. It really matters to me that as a college professor, I've been able to teach quite advanced, committed students. I've done a lot of great performances and recording projects. I get funding from my university to travel, so I've been able to go and play all over the world in music festivals and at different schools. I love the variety of creative projects that I'm always able to do. Now let's talk about orchestral players. For some people, this is living the dream. I had friends at Juilliard who would say, if I can't get in to be a full-time orchestral player, I'm going to give up on being a musician. And I hope they were all able to become orchestral musicians. And if not, I sure hope they didn't give up playing music. It can be considered the dream because you're playing music all the time as your job. You have no requirement to teach any students or go to college meetings. You get to play lots of great symphonic repertoire with a group of other musicians who are also very strong players. For me, the downsides of this profession are the reason that I chose to become a music professor. Some things like this. One is that you never get to choose the repertoire you play. And again, it's great music, but you're lacking some autonomy. Your schedule is set for you. The orchestra rehearses at certain times. They have performances at certain times. Generally, your weekends are committed. Friday and Saturday nights, you will be playing with the orchestra. And I have some musician friends who say they will go for months without getting to tuck their kids into bed at night because their kids go to sleep while they're still at the orchestra concert. If you do any solo or chamber performances, recording, composition, those kinds of projects, it's not part of your job like it is if you're a professor. It can be a pretty stressful lifestyle, especially for those instrumentalists who are soloists. If you look at the makeup of an orchestra, if you play violin, viola, cello, the string instruments, you're playing kind of in a choir. But if you're a solo instrumentalist, if you're a woodwind player or a brass player or a percussionist or one of the string players who is the lead in the section, like the concert master who may have solos fairly often, it can be quite a stressful job because you're always under the spotlight and you have to be flawless. You have to earn tenure in an orchestra just as you earn tenure as a full-time professor 
So you have to be very reliable and performing constantly. And while that can sound like heaven, and for some people that's all they want, it also can be quite stressful. So on the one hand, it can get quite stressful for people like flutists who are always playing solos. Even if you play second flute, you're the only one playing that part. While at the same time, it can get boring for musicians who are part of a choir, like the second violinists. And I've run into some orchestral musicians who get incredibly jaded and end up saying crazy things like, what is this? We have to play Beethoven Symphony Number no. five? Again? I'm so tired of this one. <laughs> Just remember that if you become a full-time orchestral player, you're living the dream and don't let yourself get jaded. Let's mention two more jobs that are kind of the same thing I've just been talking about. At least they're tied into being the same thing. One is that you could be an adjunct music professor and the other is that you could play in an orchestra that's a smaller orchestra, that's maybe a regional orchestra. So it's not a full-time, year-round committed orchestra, but you're still making some amount of money doing that. Whether you become a music professor or an orchestral player, be sure that you prepare yourself for those jobs the best that you can. Because if you become an adjunct professor or if you play in a regional orchestra, the benefits and pay are so much less. You want to do the best that you can to land the jobs that will pay you the most, value you the most, and give you the best benefits. Salary and benefits vary hugely based on the job that you get. That even is true if you play full-time in an orchestra like the LA Phil, versus if you play full-time in an orchestra that's in a much smaller city. If you're a full-time professor, you might have easily a six-figure salary and really great benefits. But if you're an adjunct professor, you'll probably be getting paid per hour and you likely have no benefits, maybe not even parking benefits. <laughs> However, again, I don't wanna to be too discouraging because again, if you get on the faculty of a college and you are the flute professor there, you'll have a lot more success getting students within the community because they'll see you as an expert. Similarly, if you're playing with a regional orchestra, people will see you as being a really capable player you may get hired for a lot more gigs that way. You may also get a lot more students. Don't turn your nose up at these kinds of opportunities because if you teach adjunct at a college, that gives you college teaching experience. It can lead to a full-time position. It can also help you to be another category of musician, which is freelance musician. Freelance musicians do any number of different kinds of jobs that may involve performing and or teaching. To some extent, nearly every musician is a freelance artist. Even though I'm a full-time professor, I take a lot of freelance jobs. There might be musicals that pass through town and freelance musicians will be called to go play in the musical. Their lives might be very busy playing a lot of services for a month or two and then that musical moves out of town and their lives are very quiet again. You might have a recording studio in your town that makes movie soundtracks or records for commercials or TV shows or video games and you get called occasionally to go in and make recordings for those. Obviously, it's hard to know exactly how much money you're going to make as a freelance musician from year to year. That's part of why freelance musicians often do a lot of teaching because that's a base salary that you can count on. It's also unpredictable depending on the economy. If the economy goes bad, a lot of gigs might dry up. But on the bright side, it's very interesting to freelance. I miss my days freelancing in New York because you're going from one thing to another thing. There's a lot of variety. You meet a lot of different people. You don't ever get stuck in a rut. Going back to full-time work, if you're looking for steady, stable salary and benefits, a good one, a popular one, is to teach middle school or high school band or orchestra or choir, depending on what your specialty is. I'm always so happy when one of my students expresses that they would like to do this because it's great job stability. I know they're going to have excellent chances of finding a job. I know they will be very highly valued in their communities. There will be kids and kids' families who love them forever. Landing a job like this is so much less stressful 
and so much more likely to do than if you're really aiming for that music professor or orchestral player job. I guess the downside here is that you'd better enjoy working with that demographic, people who are of that middle school or high school age. Also, if you're going to do band, you'd probably better enjoy a marching band because that's almost certainly going to be part of your job. That's the beginning of our list of music careers. There are probably not too many surprises in this list. If you have questions or thoughts, please put them in the comments today. I'm still working on compiling my list for next week because there are so many options and I want to open people's minds to the thought of how many different things you can do in music. There is a bit of a self-defeatist attitude out there that it's impossible to make enough money being a musician. It's true it can be challenging, but if you persevere and you know all the options, you can find jobs in music, no question. So please leave a comment if you have thoughts. We're trying to talk about things realistically, but also give you a broader perspective of the things that might be out there and available to you. Also, not to beg, but if you haven't yet liked the video or if you haven't subscribed, please do so. It's great for my channel. It helps it reach new audiences and that's always very much appreciated. Thank you.